Very good afternoon and welcome back to the Touchline on Y254. My name is Maxwell Wasiki. We're discussing matters international football and Ken Andrew is joining us. Ken, good to have you. Have you been man long time? Yeah, I've been okay. It's been fine and thank you for having me once again on your show. And your team is doing uh, horribly bad, Man United. Yeah. It lost against French Money Bucks, Paris Saint Germain in their case to qualify for Champions League football. And now la next week they have to beat against an equally stubborn side in the RB Leipzig yeah. in order to cement their chances. How, how possible is that? I think it's very possible if they produce the kind of performance they produced against Leipzig at Old Trafford. They beat them 5 0. And also looking at this Man United uh, side, they, they should have the hunger of qualifying to the next round because they made a whole mess versus PSG. They only needed a draw to make sure they go through, but they lost the game. They didn't take their chances. Now they face a huge match in Germany against a Leipzig team, which has many young players who can hurt Man United. And uh, yeah, I see United winning because I believe they are a stronger team, slightly stronger, but they are also inconsistent. So. Let's see how it goes, and let's hope United wins. And recent statistics have been favoring United. Their mm. uh, away performances yeah. uh, has been very superb, and like when they are playing at, at home, they lost PSG uh, yeah. while playing uh, at Old Trafford. Yeah. Can that, you know, uh, give them momentum to win and even boost their chances of advancing through to the next stage? Yeah, I, th I think the way they perform at home, they always show the fight, and they always... They've, they've come back in the Premier League, uh, the last four away games. They've come back to win the games. Uh, you look at their performance at Southampton away, the second half, they were superb. And also today they have an away game against West Ham, which if they win, I think they'll have the, enough confidence going into the RB Leipzig game to get a much-needed win for United to go into the round of 16. So away, Man United has been superb, but there's only that one blemish, a loss against Istanbul, which the team could have won, but they didn't, and now they've put themselves in a tight situation, which they have to win to qualify. And away from that, of course, a lot of fixtures are marked for this particular afternoon, but tomorrow it's super clash, crunch time, beating North London rivals Arsenal up against Tottenham Hotspurs, which has been doing very good under Jose Mourinho. Arsenal, on the other hand, have been shambolic, of course, lost uh, most of their previous matches against Wolverhampton and us recently, getting beaten 2-1. Yeah. But, you know, what are your per permutations as far as these weekend fixtures are concerned? Uh, I think for Arsenal, it, it will be hard for them to win, but, you know, it's a derby, and they say in derbies, tactics are thrown out the window. You just have to get the win because it uh, it deals with pride more. But if you look at the strengths of the two teams at the moment, Tottenham are way better. They have a really experienced manager who knows how to win trophies. And you look at the signings they've made this season, uh, Hoybier, Reguilon, they, they look like real players. But then again, you look at Arsenal, Aubameyang is not firing, and that means the whole front line is not firing. Nicolas Pepe has been poor. Alex Lacazette hasn't been getting enough game time as the Arsenal fans will want. So going into this weekend, I think Arsenal r really have to fight. I don't see them winning. I don't see Oba firing yet. And uh, also, I don't think uh, Arteta makes, uh, makes the, re the, the needed changes for Arsenal going forward for them to actually win games. And also... On Oba, uh, I think you see with some of these big players, uh, Mesut Ozil, Alexis Sanchez, even De Gea, when they, they sign those big contracts, their performances sort of dwindle. So uh, that may be the case for Oba, but uh, let's see how the game goes. And of course, both teams, United and Arsenal, uh, having been trolled by social media users, especially mm -hmm. on Twitter for their bad performances recently, yeah. being coached by managers who are former players. Yeah. Mikel Ateta formerly played for Arsenal and Everton as well as, uh, as, well as Oleguna Solskjaer who played for United. What is the future of football club managers yeah. who are former football players? Because we've seen Patrick Vieira being sacked by French side Nice yeah. over a unique string of poor performances yeah. from the club. What's yeah. the future like? Yeah, I think we'll see more of them. Because right now we see in Lampard. But is their future yeah. sparkling? Ah, no, no. I think most of them are working it uh, at uh, young ages compared to other managers who've been in the game for 15 or so years. Guys like Lampard, um, Arteta, Andrea Pirlo, they have just come into this game as young managers. They are trying to, to find their way of playing and everything. So they, 
uh, dismal performances should be expected because they, in terms of football management, they are still young, they haven't matured. You can't compare them immediately to the likes of Pep and Jose Mourinho who've won everything and they, they are still going on. So in terms of former players becoming managers, I think we are going to see more of it. I think there are still going to be some poor performances, but with time, if they are given time and backed properly by the clubs, I think the, the young managers, the former players, Going forward, it will be they will be the go-to managers. But almost. the two managers we're speaking about has got, mm -hmm. uh, have got vast experience. I've been there before. Yeah. Uh, you know, Mikel Ateta deputized Pep Guardiola at Manchester yeah. City for quite a long period of time, and even Oleguna Solsha yeah. was in charge of an Orean team in Molde. Yeah, yeah, Molde. So, which means experience is there, but we haven't seen much of, you mm. know impressive results from them. You saw what happened yeah. during the clash pitting United against Paris and Germain. Fred, the Brazilian, had been yellow carded, but you know, even a layman like myself would have uh, removed him from the pitch. But Oleguna yeah. waited for too long until the guy got yeah. another second yellow card, meaning that now he had to leave the pitch yeah, yeah. for two consecutive yellow cards in the same game. Yeah. Don't you think that is tactical cluelessness from yeah. a manager of that caliber. Yeah, I think uh, that angered a lot of fans and a lot of people watching the game. Why he didn't take Fred off at halftime? Maybe he thought um, he'd still have, you know, he likes Fred and Scott because they, they show fight. They always dive into tackles. But with that, knowing he dives into tackles, he should have taken him off halftime probably for Nemanja Matic. But he didn't and Fred again got another yellow card. And that's when the game totally went out of United. Ten men against PSG and they were leading 2-1 at that time. So Ole, uh, on that decision, he asked himself to blame because many people believe and many people think the way Fred had lost his head during that game, he should have been served off, but he wasn't. And uh, yeah, the game went how it went. <laughs> of course, we've always heard that, you know, best football club managers uh, do not necessarily need to have played football like Jose Mourinho he didn't play football but he's won a lot of accolades with the various clubs in Europe Real Madrid Chelsea and now in charge of Tottenham Hotspur even he recently coached United where he won a Europa League title yeah. with them but we've seen an era a recent era where you know there has been an emanation of managers rising to the mantle of being in charge of big elite clubs and having played football before Andrea Pilo, right now as we speak, in charge of Juventus, he played football. Patrice Vieira was been sacked by Nice. He was a versatile midfield linchpin, played for Arsenal as well as for the national team France. Wayne Rooney right now in charge of Derby County in interim capacity, yet to be officially confirmed as the uh, uh, you know, full tactician. Of course, played football with United for quite a long time and Everton as well. And, uh, you know, Mikel Ateta, Oleguna Solskjaer, Frank Lampard. But... I think that should form the basis of our discussion going forward on the competence and, you know, uh, capabilities of these men being in charge of elite uh, European clubs. Wayne Rooney, yeah. of course, watching him yesterday, having discussed at length with yeah. former managers uh, Sir Alex Ferguson, the great, and even David Moyes, yeah. just trying to uh, get acquainted with skills on how to go about his new challenge. I don't know. Do you think that helps? Uh, I think for Rooney, is, it's too early, For honestly. I think uh, he should just finish playing first completely, then uh, get a proper job I I at a different club, I think, because Derby this season, I think it would be hard for them to turn around because they're not, they've always been contenders for the playoffs, uh, but this season they look to be so out of form and everything. I think it will be a big ask for Wayne Rooney, but... Uh, for people who love football, for people who've been watching, I think that you have to be happy that Wayne Rooney is going to be a manager at the moment because he's one of the best ever, he's the best Premier League player in, in my opinion, you know. He was a top class number 10 for United and uh, if he can find uh, the form or the way United were playing under Sir Alex and mix it up with Derby or any other team you'll be at, I think I'd one day want him to be the manager of United because we, we love Wayne Rooney. No doubt. I think we read from the same script on that. Wayne Rooney is, is a fantastic professional, an excellent yeah. player he was for United and even national team yeah. England. And I think he's my all-time favorite. But of course, we've had other players who've done magic yeah. with the ball. But away from that, let's speak about you know the good news. Fans now are getting an opportunity to come into the stadium starting this particular weekend. How does that feel like? 
I think for United fans, we, we have to wait a bit because uh, the Manchester is tier three in England. They have to wait for a bit. So we'll be walking to away games with fans and Old Trafford will be quiet. But we love away, so we'll disappoint the West Ham fans today. There will be fans uh, in the stadiums. I think that's a good sign because football without fans at times can dull the whole atmosphere, even if you're not at the stadium. And also it's a huge step in this battle against the pandemic which has ravaged the whole year and seeing fans in stadiums at this moment it's it's very it's a very good thing and we hope by the time next year gets there we'll be able to see stadiums at full capacity because fans make the games just amazing the experience is always super as someone who's passionate about football having followed you know european football yeah. for a while how was it like you know watching these games behind closed doors with no fans in the stadium, of course, due to coronavirus pandemic, containment measures being put in place, no social gathering. I don't know. Is is it juicy as it was while watching football when the stadium are crowded and filled to the rafters? Uh, I, I don't think it is because, uh, for example, we look at Man United versus Southampton. You, you just imagine how the away end would have exploded when they got that comeback win, you know. Uh, that is taken away from the players. You can only celebrate um, the 11 of you or maybe some guys from the bench. But uh, the real experience of the fans showing passion, you know, the fans cheering on the team, I think it really lacked. But where it lacked, the quality in football did not disappoint because ever since uh, the resumption of sports, you watch some of these matches, you just go, wow, this this. These people don't need fans. They're actually really, really great. So where there are no fans, they compensated it with the great quality, especially in La Liga and the Premier League. You, you can watch the game without fans because the players go out and show out why they're the, the highest paid and the best players in the world. Yeah. Wow. Just like I indicated to you, you can also be part of the program and join the conversation. What do you think about what is to happen this particular afternoon and the weekend in general in terms of fixtures lined up of course uh, tell us the team you support and what you look forward in terms of uh, the results of your team my national supporters most of them and united will be shy to join the conversation because they are a little bit skeptical in terms of the results they expect from their teams but of course in terms of grassroots tournaments happening uh, my incoming mc edward of course also known as azad tells me that you know a quarter cup well, it's ongoing at Munami Primary School and Lubang FC continues with their good performance after beating their host 2-0 and congratulations to Ngairu as well for beating Nambale Hotstar and there are plenty of talents as far as this grassroots tournament is concerned, much potential in the grassroots. That's why we've been urging you know, most of these scouts and coaches to go to Mashinani to yeah. uh, scout for this potential and wonder kids so that they can be integrated in these national systems. Yeah. If our football has to grow and develop and get to another level. So he's telling me that, you know, there is a young man called Boki who is extremely talented and they are desperately looking to earn him uh, for trials and he's a top scorer in a quarter cup. Hopefully, Edward Okoth, when you get elected the MCA for Namamali Ward, you will work hard to ensure that this talent gets spotted and even uh, play at the big stage. Of course, it is something that has been lacking. I don't know. Have you watched most of these grassroots football yeah, yeah, yeah. tournaments? Um, there's a tournament that happens at Olympic Primary. In Kibra? Yeah, in Kibra. Yes. Interbez, which is... It, it is it Chris Darling Cup? No, the, there's Chris Darling, but there's a new one, a league they formed called Interbez, where boys who sit at the same place, they form a team. There are like 25 teams, so they form teams and they go to play against each other. Uh, there are some people have walked in and they've uh, in really invested in the team until there's player registrations. If you play for this team, you can't play it. So it's become really elaborate and it's still continuing. And you'd be, they have a lot of fans. You'd be shocked to see how many people actually turn up and how, how much these teams work, work hard. So like for me, Interbase at grassroots level, the scouts and everyone should actually go to that place, Olympic Primary or sometimes at uh, Calix at Woodley. The games are always so exciting. And I think nowadays it is value for your money because you yes. will realize that a KPL game is being staged at Nyaya National Stadium. Yes. Let's say an example, yes. but that United is playing against FC Leopards. Yeah. People are not showing up in large numbers to yeah. watch this game, but you know, this you know, grassroots football yeah. uh, tournament yes. matches, you know, people show people up in show large up. numbers in droves mm. to watch this game. I don't know what entices people to do that. Is it because of quality of football? Yeah, the quality and people also love like being at the game, you know. 
you know you're going to watch football you know these people who are playing you know this team I've, I've stayed with these people i want them to win so if i don't go to support them and the other guys come you know um at grassroots level the, the, the fans are, you, you don't want to be playing in there because the fans can tear you apart. So you also need your fans. And the way they back their players, they yes. always show up for games and they always even sponsor the teams. It's something which at KPL, if it could happen to have the, the number of fans you always see at grassroots, yes. it will be amazing. But f funny enough for KPL, we, we cannot see that because um, I think there's GoGo -Go Boys and Kibra Black Stars, if I'm not wrong. Yes. If they go out to play and sometimes Madara United and KCB, Gogo and the Black Stars can actually get a lot of fans because it's actually a huge derby in Kibra. So what happens in grassroots, the fans and how people love the game is how it should translate to KPL and we are not seeing a lot of that. Definitely. And of course, talking about, you know, uh, football competitions, Cup Champions League fixture, the preliminary round will be happening this afternoon at Nyan National Stadium. Kenyan representatives, Gormaya Football Club, will be playing host to their one these opponents in APR. Remember, the first leg ended 2-1 in favor of the APR. And, of course, Gore will be hoping that the away goal they scored will be of added advantage to them in their quest to maybe mount a draw or beat the opponents to qualify to the next stage. That game will be live and exclusive on KBC Channel 1. So sit pretty, comfortable on your coach, and enjoy the proceedings. Of course, we have to digress a little bit because we are patriotic to our game. That's why we're talking about what is happening in Mashinani, because we have to build our game locally before we go overseas. Yeah. So as we continue with overseas talk, uh, mm. Patrice Vieira yeah. getting sacked by mm. Nice. Of a string of poor performances. We saw what happened to Thierry Andre as well, now in charge of uh, Montreal Impact, yeah. a club that our very own Victor Wanyama plays for, the national team captain yeah. and former player for Tottenham Hotspur. Yeah. How, how, how is it like, you know, <laughs> uh, does it feel so embarrassing uh, for someone who was uh, an exceptional player like Patrick Vieira getting yeah. sacked by you know, sort of an average club? over <laughs> poor performance <laughs> yeah I, th I think it's sort of weird because you look at patrice Vieira, you know he's a tough guy a really you know you know him and roy kim they had their their thing over the years <laughs> antics know, yeah they had their antics they're always on each other's throats but then now you see he has some poor performances and he he's getting sucked i think uh the people who watched him and the people who like him uh, it doesn't really look well for them and it will be hard for recover because getting sucked by Nice, it will, it you'll you'll be hit somehow. Yes, you know? you'll be hit. We, we saw with uh, Gary Neville when he was sucked in Valencia. I don't think he's he's ever going to manage again. That's why he stuck to Pan yeah, he's on TV <laughs> doing analysis. Yeah, he stuck to TV totally because a guy like Neville who's had a, a fantastic career at United and then he goes at at Valencia and just gets those results. You know, you know it hurts the fans and everything. So. I also think for Vieira, he should take time off because uh, Nice is not like one of the... T okay, it is up there, but it's not a premium club in France. You know, and it's and uh, he's lucky because when you compare Nice to Monaco, the, where Thierry Henry was fired, yes, um, Monaco is a bit bigger and it was coming from a really great season. It was coming from a season where they were semi-finalists. They had Kylian Mbappe, they had in their team and everything. But he came and taught, sort of ruined everything. So, yeah, it hits the managers badly. I think we don't like seeing great great players losing like that. So they should just stick to punditry if you, if you cannot. Poor well, performances of Man United at some point led to mm -hmm. a few club fans, yeah. you know, invading the territory yeah. of Ed Woodward, who yeah. is the chief executive yeah. officer for the team, over poor transfer policy. Yeah. You know, he's, he's failed to recruit world-class players to help their team restore uh, the lost glory. Yeah. I don't know, with him continuing to back the poor performing on Laguna Solskjaer, do you mm. think he's in for uh, other attacks from fans? Yeah, uh, for me, I think sometimes it's totally not Ole because uh, some, some of the player performances also, individuals, they, they really let him down. Uh, for a great time last season, the hair was letting in goals that the, the hair will normally never let in. Maguire had a really crazy start to the season, and uh, Martial has been missing sitters. But in terms of Ole's tactically ineptness, I think he really has to improve on that because 
Uh, as fans, as everything, we cannot do anything right now because Woodward has, has already said he's going to back this guy. He's going to get him the players he wants. So it's up to Ole himself to know what players he really wants and how he really wants to play to get Man United in sort of a run, which we had seen uh, during the restart, but it's sort of disappeared again. Man United are back to in inconsistency. So with Ole being backed, I think we just have to sit back and wait and see how it goes because... That's out of our hands right now. Yep. And uh, considering that, you know, uh, Mauricio Pochettino was he formerly in charge of Tottenham Hotspur. He's yeah. unattached right now. Yeah. I've seen a lot of people mounting pressure on United to hire him and replace him with lowly performing Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Even El Geo Marakwet Senator Kipchumba Murukomen yeah. on his Twitter, who is a staunch support of United, said, yeah. come on, where is Pochettino? Yeah. Do you think that would be a, a right tactical move? Yeah, but Poch is a great manager, but he's always stumbled at the last hurdle also, you know. We have to remember that he's, he's won no major trophy. He's, he's created a Tottenham team which was amazing, really superb. They, they, they're always challenging for the league, but they've never got quite there, you know. They, they were in the Champions League final. They lost it yes. even though they, they played well. So I think if we get rid of Ole, I'm not a big fan of Poch coming in to United. Uh, I think we should get a manager who's proven, you know, someone like Max Allegri, whose yes. people have totally left out of the conversation. I think he'll be a, a great fit at United because he knows how to win. And also Thomas Tuchel, you know, if he does not get the Champions League with, with the PSG this season or they get eliminated next season, he's jobless, you know, because he's not completed what the the owners of PSG want. So that will also be a good option for United to take. A lot of fixtures happening this particular afternoon. Burnley up against Everton at 3.30 p.m. Man City will be playing host against Fulham. Then Man United will be traveling to West Ham in a late kickoff fix, of course, coming away at 8.30. Then later on, Chelsea up against Leeds. Come on, man. Let's discuss about what Olivia Giroud is doing. He scored four goals yeah, in yeah, yeah. Champions League football. Chelsea yes. against Sevilla. Man, yes. We think it's completely underrated because Very he never gets regular playing time yeah. at the Stamford Bridge. And even we see what he's capable of doing when he's playing for the national team yeah. fans. Which, how can you describe Olivia Giroud? I love Giroud. I think he's one of a. Uh, he's a very clever player. He knows when to attack the balls. He knows how to move, and he's also a person who a guy like Eden Hazard like playing with because he doesn't stick with the ball for too long. He doesn't back into players and try. He just one touch football and keeps it moving. I think a lot of people like him, and he's a really top player. And he's seven or eight goals away from being France's all-time top scorer, despite getting. <laughs> Less game time, so, you know, that's that's a really amazing start, you know. And the fact that he can show up on a Champions League night against Sevilla, which is also a serious team, and get four goals just shows you the quality and class of the man. I think where Lampard uh, doesn't really like him is the speed, first of all. Yes. Tammy and Timo Werner are speedsters, absolute monsters, and Giroud lacks there. But in terms of positioning in the box, uh, playing with teammates, moving the ball around. Giroud is top, top quality. I think uh, how he moves for the headers is how Cavani moves for them. Because I think Giroud and uh, Cavani are the only ones who could have scored that type of goal Cavani scored against uh, Southampton because of their brilliance in movement. They know how to move around in the box and get the stooping What's headers. the future of Tammy Abraham, the 23-year-old English international mm. at uh, Chelsea? at the Stamford Bridge, do you think he has got some future, considering a lot of options in terms of attacking department the team has in Olivia Giroud, in Timo Vana? Yeah, Tammy, Tammy is very underrated. He got 15 goals last season in his first full season as a Chelsea player. And also this season he's been coming in clutch and getting goals for Chelsea. He's got, I think, four or five for them this season. And yeah, he's young. That's what he's got age on his side. Right now, Giroud, Giroud might not even be at Chelsea next season. and. Timo can also, they can play together on the pitch because Timo can also come in from the side. For Tammy, I feel like he's very underrated by a yes. lot of people. He gets a lot of goals and he's a serious player. He knows how to head, he knows how to shoot, he knows how to stay with the ball because he's a big guy. And he's also brilliant in terms of movement in the box. And he's also got edge on his side. So I think he's massively underrated, but 
time shows he will be a great player for England and Chelsea. Let's spread our wings a little bit further to other European leagues happening. Sevilla up against Real Madrid following, you know, that shocking 4-0 against Chelsea. Yeah. Do you think they will bounce back? I think <laughs> Real can be beaten by anyone right now because... <laughs> I, I, <laughs> what is the problem with Real Madrid? It's it's very hard to know because um, you look at the players who are winning the three Champions Leagues those three years, and you look at most of them are still there. Yes, you know, Luka and Modric, Luka Modric, you know, Tony Cruz, Cruz uh, Sergio Nacho, Ramos, Ramos Varane, and they also have a great goalkeeper in Kotua, Karim Benzema, and all of a sudden, a Real Madrid team which was almost untouchable in the Champions League is losing to Shakhtar Donetsk twice. You know, and also in La Liga, they, are, they have not been getting the great results. They beat Barcelona, everyone thought, oh, they are better than Barca, but look, look again, they lost against Alaves, they, they, look, they look a really weak team. And Sevilla, they know how to hit you when you are weak, you know. And okay, they lost against Chelsea, but they had already qualified, so they could have lost that game, they were already in the round of 16. Going into this game, La Liga is still wide open, so they will want to win. And looking at the way Real are inconsistent, and their captain is still out, I don't see them winning for. We have period. a problem with Zinedine Zidane. He's, yeah. he's one of the best club managers in the. He was yeah. a great footballer. I yes. fancy him. I used to watch him. I admire him yeah. as a person and even as a coach. Yeah. But you see, how comes he never plays Isco? Yeah, that I also like Isco playing. I also like to see him playing. But uh, ever since he came back, he's not been a fan of Isco because the the period before he left. Isco featured in all the Champions League finals. Isco was, was a really, he really bloomed into a fantastic world-class player under Zizou. But all of a sudden, he's not playing him. Uh, these days, he prefers the young guys. I've seen Odegaard getting game time, uh, Rodrigo and Vinicius. But I think getting guys like Isco back into the team, you get a guy like Isco back to playing at his best, that's a really good thing for Madrid because those guys, we, sh we, we should never forget that they won three Champions Leagues on a spin. Sure. And they can do it again. They can win a fourth one. So getting those guys back on target, back on form, is, will be the key to unlocking another title for Zizou. Bayern Munich up against RB Leipzig. That looks like you know, a pulsating clash as far as German Bundesliga yeah. is concerned. Leipzig did very well in the last two seasons, yeah. of course, but it was a huge setback for them, yeah. losing some of the influential players in Timo Werner, yeah. who left for Chelsea Football Club. Who else yeah. left? Uh, Patrick Schick, who was on yes. loan on Roma, left. Yeah, I remember. And at some point, their reliable defender was, mm. you know, uh, being sought after yeah. by several European clubs. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. What... What do you think about that game? Are Bayern still unstoppable? Bayern are very unstoppable. Um, <laughs> because you look at the team they get, they gave Atletico to play against Atletico. It wasn't their go-to team, but their second string sort of got the draw against uh, Atletico to keep the unbeaten run on going. But Leipzig, uh, Leipzig are a very strong team young team you know they, they are dynamic they will go at you you come at us we go at you and that's a thing that a lot of people don't do to Bayern they are afraid of attacking Bayern because Bayern might hurt you but Leipzig will go and play against Bayern how they play against any yeah. other team and that is one thing that will boost yeah. them but Bayern um, anyone going to play against Bayern is will just have to be very skeptical and have to be sharp defensively so it will be a very exciting game and I, I just see Bayern winning because they are Bayern Munich. And yeah. come on, man. Did you watch Cristiano Ronaldo play in yes. Champions League football midweek? What yes. a remarkable player yes. in the Portuguese international. He's been, uh, he's been phenomenal, um, scintillating amazing. performance from him. Remember, mm. he, he, he contracted coronavirus yes. pandemic and he was positive just a few weeks ago. Yeah. But immediately after his recovery process has been He's come been on, man, on this guy. Cylinders. Yeah, I think that shows you how great of a player he is. Because he's ever since he's come, the game he's not played in is the only game that Juve have not won. They didn't play against Benevento and they didn't win. You know? You look at the other game at Champions League, uh, right now he's got seven fifty games, uh, seven fifty goals. Amazing. He's behind Pele who's got seven sixty seven despite and Pele was playing in Brazil and you know his goals people don't agree that most of them are official goals but the thing with Cristiano is that he's 35 people tend to forget that he's, he's he should be an old guy a lot of players retired 33 34 but he's go, still going at 35 
and he'll still be going on at 36 because he's he's just you can't you have no words for him he's just Cristiano Ronaldo amazing not from this world really and amazing. elsewhere uh, of course in the same breath yeah. Lionel Messi the man who has always been compared to yeah. Cristiano Ronaldo not doing very well yeah, yeah. since you know the predicaments at Barcelona started. Ronald Koeman came in. He's also a former player. He won yeah. Champions League title yeah. with Barcelona in 1992. Yeah. And he's not been very convincing at the Camp Nou. Yeah, I think for Messi, first of all, for Messi, Messi doesn't want to be there. You know? His heart he, is not there. His heart is not. He's, he's a Barca fan. He's a Barca boy. But he wanted to leave Barca uh, the way they treated his, his friend Suarez. That really hurt him. And... Yeah, you know, these days you look at clips and Messi, he should be pressing, but he's just watching guys, they're just getting the ball. He just wants the ball to be passed to his feet, he's never doing that extra work. But also, he's not been that bad. We saw last week, uh, he had a great performance, he scored an amazing goal. He's not that bad, he's not ref, but I think the key to really having Messi top is for him to leave Barca right now because it's not a proper working condition for him. He doesn't want to be there. You hear Griezmann's uh, agent always coming out and saying, oh, working with Messi is hard. So it's not a... He had even had a rant when he came from international duty at the airport. The tax guys were waiting for him. He doesn't want to be a Barca player at the moment, even though he's loved and worshipped as the guy who's, who's, who has a lot of backing from all the Barca fans. But uh, Barca should just let him go, either in January or in the summer. And uh, I am sure Messi gets another proper coach, maybe Pep, that's one people really want to see him with. He gets another coach, he gets another club, he'll be back to his uh, brilliant best. Yeah. I think you and I are, are uh, we can feel Messi, yeah. and I think he's justified in his concerns yeah. uh, as he seeks to push his yeah. move away from Camp Nou. Because yeah. as a best player you want to be, yeah. Uh, surrounded by yeah, equally yeah. great players. We saw yes. what happened, you know, the likes of Luis Suarez leaving yes. for Atletico Madrid. There was sort of mm -hmm. a slim exodus of, you know, great players from Barcelona and whatever that remained there haven't been sort of complimenting Messi yeah, very yeah, well yeah. because even we've heard from Pandit saying that Messi doesn't perform very well. He can't replicate the same club performance yeah. when during international football with Argentina because, because he lacks... The you same know, quality. The same quality had, around him. Yes. I don't know. Does Barcelona need that depth going forward yes. to they get do. them back into the fold? They do. Because when you look at Barca's bench, uh, most of the times you'd find Dembele and the other guys are young. Young guys, really young. And even you go and if they are to play um, a team like uh, Man City, Liverpool, you look at the people coming from their benches because they are going to compete against each other in the Champions League. You, you never know who's going to hurt you because their benches are also really strong. For Barca's bench and also some of the players in there with Messi, I don't think they're, they're top, top quality. Give Messi proper players. You look at 2015 uh, Champions League, how they were just booming against everyone. He had Neymar, he had Suarez, Andres Iniesta, Xavi, yes. those kinds of players around him, and he'll be amazing. But right now, he doesn't want to be there because of how the club is run, the players around him and also wants a new adventure, we could say so, yeah. So, uh, the fixtures for this particular weekend, English Premier League football, early yeah. kickoff, 3.30, Burnley up against Everton. Yeah. Can Carl Angelotti uh, defy all odds and beat uh, Burnley? Yeah, you know. Which has recorded, you know, mixed results. Yeah. In their last, I don't know how many games, they have only managed a single a win. win. Yeah, yeah, and a team like Burnley, which has been uh, fighting for the top seven the past Ever since they came into the Premier League, uh, th it's kind of shocking. And I think for Everton going there, and they're also out of form themselves, despite having this amazing uh, start to the season, going away to Burnley at Tough Moo, if they show up and they decide they're playing their regular direct football, it o it's always hard to beat them because defensively they are usually well set up by Sean Dykes. And... Uh, uh, Everton right now haven't aren't really in their stride, you know. They've kind of lost their form, the form they had. So I think Burnley should win this game because they need it more because they should create some separation from the Sheffield and uh, the other guys down there. So they should win it. But Everton, if they come out firing, easy win for them because they have the quality. Yeah, they have the quality indeed. Another game we'll see, you know, West Ham 
uh, playing host to United uh, this evening at 8.30. Yep. David Moyes in charge of West Ham. He yeah. was by previously United. a manager for United. Yeah. Is, is he up to, for revenge? Yeah, I think there's that edge where Moyes really wants to prove these guys. If you could have given me the kind of money that you're giving Ole and stuff, I could have brought you a lot of good things. So there's that edge in the game. And also West Ham are on a brilliant run, you know. They have they have fantastic they made fantastic signings in Thomas Suchek yes. and uh Kufal, the, the the right back. They have been absolutely fantastic. Angelo Ogbona and also Arthur Maswaku have been really amazing for this club. And Man United, you know, they are inconsistent. Even though we have this amazing away run in the Premier League going on, Man United are still very inconsistent. We don't know what to expect from them. We don't know how they will show up and defend. But And also, Man United will be playing in a London Stadium with fans for West Ham. So, it will be a scary game for them. But United, uh, with the quality they have, with the people they have, they should get a win from that, or a draw at least. Because... Um, West Ham and United, are, even though West Ham are on a good run, United is the bigger team. United has more quality, so I see it as a United bin, but it will be probably the game of the weekend. A lot of goals, I expect to see that, and also a lot of emotion because fans will be there here. Do you know what? I would want to see Scott Parker. He's a player yeah. I also had mad during his heyday days with West Ham, now yeah. in charge of Fulham yeah. as a manager, I think he also played for Fulham yes. at some point, so he's a, an old boy for yes. the club he manages today. I would wish him to stay in English Premier League, but unfortunately you see no much resources as yeah. far as funding and investment of Fulham is concerned. Yeah, a lot yeah. of players uh, who are promoted with the team are the one participating in top yes. tier, meaning that they didn't sign, they didn't go to the transfer market to bolster their current squad. Yeah. But he's up against, you know, a Herculean task this evening against, you know, Manchester City, who yeah. routed, they thrashed Burnley 5 nil in their previous game. Yeah. Without even Sergio Cunha Aguero. Yeah, but you, you also see how they performed against Porto. FC Porto in Champions, Champions League. League. It was nil, nil. Yeah, nil, nil. And you can say uh, Fulham, if they... You know what they did to Leicester? If they can show up with that sort of they determination, can pull an upset. they might. They can pull an upset, but if City just decide today's the day, they're going to have a lot of goals to take out from the back of the net. But, uh, you know, Scott Parker was a great uh, manager. He is a great manager yes. because he just brought them back up into the Premier League uh, in his first full season. And also, the fact that Scott Parker is using uh, players from the Championship to... To still play in the Premier League, uh, should also people should also give a lot of praise to Chris Wilder for Sheffield United last season because the majority of his squad last season were still players from the Championship and look at how amazing they were because it is very hard to come up from the Championship with those kind of players and uh, get the kind of results that Sheffield United have been ha got last season. This season it, it seems like reality and everything has struck and uh, and they are performing poorly but great jobs by g both of them great managers scott park and chris wilder so as we wind up the show of course there is a live event happening in the outskirts of nairobi where y254 will be covering live and exclusive so in terms of your last submissions what should we look forward to this particular weekend yeah i think this particular weekend and this whole week for united fans first of all it's a monumental week because we have to get a Champions League win and we also don't want to be left too behind in the table, so we have to beat West Ham. But apart from that, we have the North London derby. We have uh, Juventus versus Barcelona, Messi versus Ronaldo once again. So it's a great week for football and uh, it's going to be like this for six more weeks because international football is done. So enjoy your football this week, next week and yeah, enjoy your festive season. Definitely, of course, it's the touchline coming your way every Saturday, one to three. But today, of course, there is a live event happening in the outskirts of Nairobi where Y254 has been pitching camp since uh, morning and they will be bringing you the proceedings of what is happening. Of course, it's a youth platform, so we're giving youth all they need in terms of, you know, entertainment, matters, fashion, lifestyle and sports. So you can always get glued uh, on this particular platform every Saturday, one to three, as we keep you posted with what is happening, especially this festive season, a lot of grassroots tournament uh, happening. And you can also keep us an update with the results of what is happening in your neighborhood. And of course, as usual, as our norm in your neighborhood.